Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new News Roundup video. Today, we're diving into a bunch of different topics, starting with the Batman Part 2. Yes, believe it or not. The DCU to, you know, Jonathan Kent, Martha Kent, all good things like that with Superman. We've even got uh, some rumors about the DCU's Teen Titans movie some other stuff with lanterns and you know there's a bit of dc stuff as always with what gun's been saying and whatnot but then we're, we're gonna go on to joker 2 with a story that came out from a major trade in which kind of caught me off guard if you've been paying attention to my joker 2 coverage but as always this video is time stamped you can hover over the video bar the little buffering bar and there'll be timestamps there or in the video description so skip around if you want to but as as I always say i recommend sticking around for all of it so you're extra up to date would really appreciate a like as well because that lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and uh, that, that's 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 good that's 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 a good thing but starting off right away here with the Batman part two so discussing films say the Batman 2 begins filming in April next year casting news expected to happen this fall and this is coming from the insnider.com so before we get onto the casting rumors and what's going on there um I just want to talk about this for a second so casting news expected to happen this fall film Filming around about April next year, so of 2025. I tend to believe this because it's basically what I was kind of predicting anyway, just through, okay, October 2026 is when it releases. You take off a year, 12 to 13 months of post-production, so editing and all of that good stuff. For example, the Batman 1 had a year's worth of post-production. So you take that off, that will take you to, what, September, October 2025. Then you subtract, I don't know, uh, a lot of movies, comic book movies film within three to five months. Months, but for the Batman, let's just call it five months. You then subtract that filming time off of, what was it, October, September of 2025, and that should take you back to around April-ish of um, 2025, of where they would, as is saying here, you know, the Batman 2 begins filming April next year. So, you know, it could be April, May-ish. There's another outlet here claiming that the Batman Part 2 to shoot in early 2025. Uh, we're hearing around February or March. So yes, that would mean as a result that I would expect to hear things about casting towards the fall of this year, give or take. Again, I keep saying give or take because you can never really be spot on. I mean, for example, it's not like they need to search for their Batman, their Selena Carl, their Jim Gordon. Now, this moves me into the actual casting rumor that is coming out for the Batman Part 2. So I'm going to play devil's advocate at the same time. So I was getting tagged in this Hollywood handle outlet post saying Boyd Holbrook is rumored to be in talks to play Harvey Dent in Matt Reeves' The Batman Part 2. Long story short, Harvey Dent is not an, a, an absolute, you know, certainty to be in the Batman Part 2, but it's something of which, if you're familiar with my channel, we've been very much so adamant that, well, yeah, Harvey Dent fits very well into Batman Part 2. Gil Coulson had his freaking head blown off from the Riddler in Part 1. That leaves the position of District Attorney open. So we expect Harvey Dent... That doesn't mean we're going to get him because I'm just putting it out there. What if we don't? I'm not saying that we won't, but it's a possibility I need to entertain. Now, one of the first things you might be thinking is, really? How are we getting anything like this being reported out there when, as far as we're aware, there is no script for part two as of right now? Matt Reeves is extremely meticulous. He's very slow, self-admittedly there. But would there be, with that in mind, no final draft handed in as far as we're aware right now? This somewhat casting rumor, would it, would it really be tangible? Would it be legit? So this is coming from, I mean, I know the Hollywood handle, if you will, put that out there in a billion other, you know, fan outlet pages on social media, but they're sourcing breakingfilm.medium.com. Now, I haven't really heard of this. As far as I'm aware, it's a place that you can kind of create accounts like this and have a little kind of page or bloggy page. My vibe meter on reliability here, if that means anything, <laughs> it's just, I guess, my intuition is a bit, I don't know about this, you know, I've never heard of this place. This page, Breaking Film, on Medium, uh, has only got two followers on it. Uh, they, they're after reporting on financial inside information, we, we've pivoted to filmmaking. Okay, well, I'm not discrediting them in the sense of like, what if, what if this, this exclusive of theirs is legit? Do you know what I mean? You never know. But what I will say as well is that the sources are that I'm being tagged in, in conjunction with this article, is another kind of red flag for me. Now, again, I can't shut it down with absolute certainty, but people are tagging me 
in IMDb. And if there's one thing everyone should know watching us right now is that when you like Google the Batman 2 cast or you look on IMDb, right? I'm not saying this is the case as of talking right now. So I've had people reach out to me saying, hey, well, Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga um, is in the cast list. If you did your research, you would know that that's the truth. And it's just like, what? So you're telling me that? Barry Keoghan's Joker in the Batman 2 is just going to, like, morph into Joaquin Phoenix. Like, what? How how long is it going to take for people to realize that you don't trust IMDb with this stuff because you can basically edit it? You don't trust Google cast lists like that? It Just, just stop. Just stop. Now, when it comes to this, I will admit that IMDb is a little bit more touch and go compared to the Google cast thing, if you will, because... You do have legitimate talent and their agencies and whatnot add said client like, you know, an assistant or like, you know, a stunt person to the list. But then again, there's been billions of examples in movies pasts in where people are claiming, oh, well, this person's on the IMDb, so they must be this character in the movie because it says they are. And that's just not the case, as I just somewhat mentioned, right? So here you have, you know, the stunt double for Andy Serkis, and then you have... Um, the stunt double for Boyd Holbrook being added. And then you have, like, the assistant for Robert Pattinson and Jeffrey Wright, and then an assistant for Boyd Holbrook. So again, people are just kind of adding this all together to mean that this Boyd Holbrook exclusive report for Harvey Dent it, it is now true. But for me, this just doesn't really mean anything. Again, I can't tell you that this is not a true rumor or, like, exclusive story, but... There's really still no tangible evidence for me. Then you have this thing in mind with regards to, is Boyd Holbrook really been tapped to play Harvey Dent when we haven't really entered proper pre-production for the Batman Part 2 and we haven't heard anything from a major trade with regards to the script being handed in. Now, to play devil's advocate, as I said, one thing that you could argue here, and I don't want you guys to read too deep into this, but... You could entertain a possibility in where a story like this, an exclusive, and it'd be quite a mighty exclusive if this was the case, that you could have found out the actor who's been tapped to play a role even without the news of the script being completed, even without going properly into pre-production. Now, I don't know how you would get that source, but technically... I'm saying this because Matt Reeves wrote The Batman with Robert Pattinson in mind to play Bruce Wayne. He didn't know I will guarantee if he would get the role because, for example, there were other frontrunners like Nicholas Holt and whatnot. But the same thing for Paul Dano. Matt Reeves says he wrote in mind for him as well. He didn't. He says that he didn't know if he would accept it or not. But after a conversation, you know how that went. So you could argue when writing the script for The Batman Part 2, if Harvey Dent the new district attorney for Gotham has been written into the plot and the script, then you could argue he really sees Boyd Holbrook for that. And that is why even though things aren't, you know, the I's haven't been dotted and the T's haven't been crossed with regards to like fully starting things for the Batman part two yet, there's enough substance there for the story that Matt Reeves has already started talks with Boyd Holbrook. Because if I remember correctly, I believe Dylan Clark met with Robert Pattinson while Matt Reeves was writing the script because it was at a period of time in where it wasn't ready, but they both recollect that conversation, Robert Pattinson included here, that he heard that he's like, I hear you're writing something to do with the Batman. And Robert Pattinson expressed interest. But the script wasn't done. Do you know what I mean? So all I'm trying to argue there is that provisional preemptive conversations can happen. But that is me giving so much wiggle room there and benefit of the doubt and good faith to this exclusive rumor that... I don't really, you know, I would say don't believe it for now. Bookmark it in your head if you want to. I wanted to play devil's advocate like that, but that is like a Hail Mary long shot. Take that as you will. So Boyd Holbrook, what I'll say there is, oh man, I love that casting choice or fan casting, we'll just call it for now, for Harvey Dent. It's something I haven't really thought about before, I have to admit. I've always been a fan of even what we've heard of rumors before, like Josh Hart, that, that would be pretty cool. Uh, or Benny Safdie. Like, yeah, I, I really see that, especially Benny being more what I imagine, for example, an accurate comparison to the Batman the Animated Series Big Bad Harv, especially earlier on. Um, but Boyd Holbrook, man, oh man, that would be sick. I love him in, obviously, Logan, uh, several other things, like the Sandman being another somewhat... Uh, modern one, if you will. And as I've said before, I would I would personally like, let's just say, and hypothetically entertain 
Boyd Holbrook is playing Harvey Dent. I would like him to remain Harvey in the second film, but show the cracks of the personality, the frustration parts coming out. And, you know, that makes sometimes people raise their eyebrow a little bit. Um, and then in the third film, if we get that Batman part three, if the Batman part two is very successful, which I hope it is, obviously, you continue that character's arc and maybe they can be like in, I'm not saying like an ensemble cast of loads of villains like Riddler and Joker, who knows really what part three could be about, but maybe you could sprinkle Harvey Dent in there as well. And lastly, to just kind of, um, you know, move on to the next subject, but somewhat keep it in line of the reliability of this Boyd Holbrook casting for Two-Face is that there's another thing somewhat shooting it down. We have these other stories coming from Breaking Film through the website known as Medium, and where they said exclusive Corey Hawkins to join the cast of DC Studios is Waller. A rep from DC Studios has confirmed... Wait, what? James Gunn got asked about this over on Threads. Uh, Hello, James. Is the rumor about Corey Hawkins in DCU's Waller true? And he says, the scripts aren't finished, so haven't started the casting process. So no. So... He shot down that article that you're seeing on screen right now, which means that hasn't officially started, according to Gunn. And, you know, that, that's up to you if you want to believe the co-head of DC Studios that casting hasn't even started. And they say now in an update to the report, James Gunn reportedly debunked this, but our source is sticking to their story. Stay tuned. Well, my answer to that would be, if a rep for DC Studios has confirmed, why aren't you... You just show it like again hide their identity but it's like hey i mean i guess you could fake that but you get my point point. and once again the other update imdb corroborated the news by announcing Corey stunt doubles involvement in the series again you know imdb guys like well i don't need to say again what i said earlier so again take that as you will the fact that gun debunked that article if you will report about the dc waller casting coming from the same place as the harvey dent boyd holbrook casting uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I yeah, thought I'd cover it anyway because so many people were talking about this online. Okay, so now diving into the DCU. So this post really intrigued me from this user saying, James Gunn, while filming in Atlanta, will there be additional roles or opportunities for local talent? And if so, uh, would they be listed on breakdown services or strictly through representation? Gunn then says... All roles in Atlanta have been filled. I think all speaking roles, he goes on to say here, in the film have now been filled actually. So automatically, this gets people to think about all kinds of things. So every speaking role. So now people are thinking, okay, so is there a villain beyond Lex Luthor and the, the posed antagonist of the engineer? Maybe there will, maybe there won't, because this is kind of a thing of just because all the speaking roles in the film have now been filled according to Gum, well, <laughs> he would know. Just because we haven't heard a casting announcement doesn't mean that there hasn't been more characters cast. Although I wouldn't mind if Lex is the kind of the puppet master behind the curtains and, um, you know, the engineer is more of that front facing physical threat, even though there's a full circle moment where she's like, screw you, Luther, maybe by the end of the movie. But obviously there's two other very important characters that we, we were expecting an announcement for, which could, I, I need to make a note of here, could still be announced, maybe even by the time I upload this video. You never know. But that is Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent. Ma and Pa Kent. If all speaking roles obviously have been filled, well, they're, they've either been cast and it hasn't been announced yet, or there is no Jonathan and Martha Kent, and people are saying, what if they're both dead? I wouldn't really like that, because all while Jonathan and Martha Kent don't have to be massive roles in this film, I think through killing them both off, it would feel a bit absurd to me because you're missing out on some kind of opportunities in the future, whether that's bringing Lois to the Kent farm. He could still do that, I guess, but it, it's just like, why not introduce her to his adoptive parents? Things like that. So I don't think they're both dead. I'm thinking it's more of a case of, okay... As Gunn says, I think all speaking roles in the film have now been filled, actually. It's just that they haven't been announced yet. And I don't expect that they're massive, massive characters in the movie. Uh, so they didn't have to be at the table read. As we know, Gunn said uh, only like, you know, big, big, big speaking characters needed to be there. So if they have lines in the movie of which, you know, if they're in the film, I would hope that they would have a few lines. Um, they were probably minimal. So you had other readers probably at that table read. For example, Jennifer Holland, James Gunn's wife, maybe read those lines out. But yeah, long story short, before I ramble too much about this, I'm really hoping for Ma and Park Ken. I think that'd be a nice change to have both 
Kent's in the film, but maybe a little bit older this time. And what I mean by that is it's kind of a thing, right? Like Aunt May keeps getting younger and younger. Freaking Mark Kent's probably getting younger and younger. So maybe this time you can have the situation of where Jonathan and Martha Kent wanted to have children, but for some reason or another, they weren't able to. So, you know, Clark arriving after many years of trying to have kids, trying this, trying that, they hit, let's just say, 35, 36, 37. Now, as we know, Superman in the movie, as revealed by James Gunn, will match David Cornsweet's age, which is around 31. So, you know, having Jonathan and Martha Kent being 66, 67, I think would be quite nice, because obviously that's 30, 31 years plus 35, which would make him 66. So instead of having them like early 50s, I get it. I wouldn't have an issue with that if they chose an actor in their 50s. But I think it'd be I think it'd be kind of nice having a much, much older kind of granny and grandpa type Jonathan and Martha Kent to the 30, 31 ish year old full time reporter, fully fledged reporter, as Gunn said it and Superman Clark Kent. But let me know what you what your preference is there. Would you like more of a younger casting for Martha and Jonathan Kent because I guess you could also say that you know Clark landed on their farm when they were only like 23 and a young married couple but I I'm thinking years and years of wanting to have a family Clark arrives they're 35 ish so plus 30 years 31 years they're in their mid to late 60s I think that'd be quite sweet but I'm already kind of rambling here I just wanted to mainly comment on well if all speaking roles in the film have now been filled it makes you think about the characters we were wondering about so is there another villain I don't know could just be the engineer well not you know what I mean about the engineer maybe not a villain but mainly Luther and seeing what gets you know exposed there as he comes more into the light from the shadows throughout the duration of the Superman plot um, and then of course Jonathan and Martha Kent and maybe some other roles for example if there's a speaking role from Kara, as in Supergirl, Millie Alcock's character, she could cameo in the film. There's all of these other mini mini-esque roles that we, we could consider being in the movie, and just because we haven't heard a major trade confirm the casting, that doesn't mean that they're not in the film. It just means that the news is being kept under wraps a little bit until it does inevitably come out. Now, as we sprinkle throughout some of Gunn's replies here, uh, we get this user saying, how was filming today? And Gunn says, one of the best days so far. Really makes you wonder what happened on the set of Superman. Was it like an awesome moment in the suit? Was he flying? I don't know. But one of the best days so far. Oh man, I want well, to be a fly on the wall. Then we have DCU updates here, spotting a reply from Maria Gabriela de Fria, who plays the engineer, um, with this user saying, where's Isabella? Because she's not with you. I say I haven't seen anything about her yet behind the scenes. Whereas we do see a, quite a bit about Mr. Terrific. I mean, look at Eddie Gathegi here. My God. He's looking quite terrific, if you ask me. He, he, Jesus, everyone is getting ripped for this film. Um, but yeah, we haven't really heard much from Isabella Mercedes who's playing Hawk Girl, other than when she was um, talking about how she's tried on her helmet and stuff in an interview uh, a, a month or two back now. Uh, but Maria says here, Isabella works so, so much because she's a star and everybody wants her in their projects, of course. But she's been rehearsing a lot and I have pretty awesome pictures of her during her stunt training, but I can't share them, of course. She's going to be fantastic. So basically very, very busy. She also gives an update after DC updates us, where's Superman himself? And Maria Gabriela de Freer says, non-stop filming. And, you know, I, it does make, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying I feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he's got this breakout role. It must be amazing. Who knows? Uh, hopefully this will rise him to God knows where in future projects and stuff. I mean, he's going to be Superman of the DCU for the next eight to 10 years if things, you know, remain consistently successful. But this guy is probably... Can you imagine how busy David Cornsweet is non-stop filming? Now, moving on to lanterns. We have from Jeff Snyder here, um, and this was quite a few days ago now. Chris Mundy and Tom King have been writing the Green Lantern series for the past few months. We have Damon Lindelof serving as executive consultant. They need to finish writing before they can see who can star in the series. But DC Studios wants at least one big name, which is interesting because this does take me back to DCU leaks, the subreddit, because they've actually, as I've said before, the reason why I started entertaining leaks a bit more on the channel, even though I do put in a caveat of saying like, okay, heavily rumors, 
But, you know, I did cross-reference a lot of leaks and a lot of them did go on to turn out to be true with the DCU. And DCU leaks did claim very similar details, I believe, with Chris Mundy, uh, Damon Lindelof and, and whatnot. Um, and I believe this is this is what I found fascinating at the time. They also added in details, and these are still unconfirmed, that John Stewart, they're looking for actors around about the ages of 20 to 30, whereas Hal Jordan could be 30s to 40. So, you know, you could have Hal Jordan. Again, think about Batman in the DCU. If Damian Wayne's coming in, he's been clearly active for it. They've, you know, this is like very minimum eight years, but then like to 12 years or something like that. So you can kind of translate that perhaps onto other heroes. I mean, look, we've got Guy Gardner as Nathan Fillion. We don't know how long he's had his ring, but how Jordan could have been a Green Lantern for, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years, something like that. Again, we're hitting the ground running in this DCU. And John Stewart could kind of be the rookie. Like, Maybe he's had his ring for a year or two, but he's still in his 20s, mid-20s. Maybe he's 28, maybe he's 29, around my age. But he's still kind of a rookie lantern compared to that of Hal Jordan. And again, I, I need to remind everyone, this has got like a true detective-inspired vibe to it, apparently. I love that. Um, they uncovered this ancient horror. I love that. And apparently it's, you know, really reverberating throughout the DCU's main storyline with, with whatever they find. Like, apparently it's a really important show Peter Safran stressed in some press comments way back in January of 2023. So they want one big actor. I wonder if that's going to be for Hal Jordan or maybe Jon Stewart. I don't know. Would they want the bigger actor to be for, like, the older potentially older Green Lantern uh, or maybe a rising star in their 20s to play... Um, John Stewart. That is the question. And if you have any fan castings, let me know. But I cannot wait to get some news of substance with Lanterns. It is seriously one of my most hyped things of the DCU. Now, second to last here, I've been told, and a lot of you guys have told me this, there's been some rumors surrounding the DCU Teen Titans movie. Now, one thing that I find interesting about this is that it does come, or initially, an aspect of it comes from Production Weekly. And Production Weekly is pretty legit, I could say, but it's, it, it reports news that is subject to change. For example, they said that the Batman 2 had been delayed from November to March, but again, they were technically right with that, but it didn't mean it wasn't subject to change. Like, March clearly wasn't the filming date, as in right now, uh, like Superman's was, and, and now it's been pushed back. But what they do have, and you have to pay a lot of money to be a member because they get kind of little, you know, detailed aspects of productions to post their production weekly subscription service. So as you can see here, Teen Titans is very visible there. However, what a lot of people are reading into here is the plot details reveal. So coming here from comicbasics.com, they re-report here, according to Production Weekly, some of this information. And they're saying that the movie is reportedly set to begin production in late 2025, and the following synopsis has been given. Now, again, I wouldn't necessarily dispute the tentative shooting date of late 2025, if that's what Production Weekly is saying, but it is very easy, easily subject to change. But the plot details here, it reminds me of the Waller thing that came out recently. Uh, the Teen Titans are further apart than ever before until Damian Wayne recruits Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and the new Kid Flash to join him in a fight against his own grandfather, Ra's al Ghul. Now, this is a somewhat synopsis logline, if you will, of the DC Universe Rebirth Teen Titans Volume 1, Damien Knows Best. So the fact that it is a uh, somewhat word-for-word -word copy and paste synopsis of that plot i wouldn't say this is the plot of the teen titans movie you can't you can't like it's, it's just it's like a placeholder let me put it that way now i think it's interesting because i do fully expect damian wayne to be in the teen titans i think it's coming off of the back of brave and the bold and obviously if damian wayne is in the teen titans D dcu movie it can only really be set after brave and the bold because damian wayne's only coming in in brave and the bold because some people think that it could be a prequel, but I think there's way more going against that um, versus it being set in present day after the Batman Brave and the Bold movie. But yeah, don't read too deep into this. The production weekly details are interesting as for like the tentative shooting date, but that's what I would take out of this versus, oh my God, is this the lineup of the Titans? Is this exactly how it's going down? Are they going up against Ra's al Ghul? Don't like bookmark it, but like don't take it for like absolute certainty. But funnily enough, I do think that Russell Gould could somewhat be 
the man behind the curtains in Brave and the Bold. And, you know, that could actually, funnily enough, translate over to the Titans movie. But that's a whole other video. Now, lastly, ladies and gentlemen, something that I really wanted to talk about today, I'm a little bit late to is the variety piece about Joker 2. So Joker 2 musical details revealed at least 15 cover songs. Original tracks may be added. Right, okay. So this is interesting to me because I kind of like confidently have said, and I'll take the L here, um, I recited, I think Variety even said this before on Deadline, that all while I've I've said consistently that yes, Joker 2 will be musical-esque, it will have musical numbers in it, you should think of it more like, as per what I was uh, re-reporting here, you had bigger outlets saying things like, it's more a Star is Born versus that of In the Heights. And I was like, okay, it's got musical aspects to it, but it's, it might only be a few songs. But 15 is kind of a lot of songs to the point of, I think, possibly more songs than some actual musical movies have. So let's read this quickly. So the Joker and Harley Quinn are set to serenade audiences in Joker fully adieu, but if and how many original songs will be included in the film is a mystery. Inside is privy to filming and early versions of Todd Phillips' eagerly awaited sequel to Joker tell Variety the movie leans heavily towards being mostly a jukebox musical, as it integrates at least 15 reinterpretations of very well-known songs. One is said to be, as we know, if you've been sticking around on the channel for Joker coverage, That's Entertainment from the 1953 musical. The bandwagon, famously associated with Judy Garland, we've covered. They, you know, want a Judy Garland vibe, Charlie Chaplin-esque vibe, um, and whatnot. However, there is a door open for an original song or two that uh, to be added to the final version. I 100% believe that Lady Gaga has written a song for this movie. Details regarding who would pen the tracks or sing, the numbers are unknown. We do, I, I think it's obvious that it's Lady Gaga. We do know, according to sources, uh, Hilda Gudnodottir, the Oscar winning composer for the first Joker of film, is said to infuse her distinctive, haunting music cues into each number. I love that. Like renditions. Like, again, say what you will about the musical information about this movie. But I do think that they had to go out swinging to justify a second movie. And funnily enough, it's ironic to say you almost had to do a move like making it a musical to justify doing something like a sequel because that comes off of the back of people being like, oh, Joker doesn't need a sequel. Like, it definitely doesn't. But if you're going to do a sequel, why not kind of do something controversial? And I say controversial because as many people are like, oh, I don't care about musicals. Why are they doing like blah, blah, blah. But... What if it's damn good? That's what I've got to say. And I love Hilda Goodnodottir's freaking score of the first movie. And the fact that you could have like a weird, wacky, Harley theatrical Joker, you know, that's entertainment, Judy Garland thing. But then it gets dark and you have Hilda's like cello coming in. And it's just, I can see the vision, guys. I know there's some of you out there who can see the vision like me, but... I know a lot of you will be like, screw this, <laughs> because, yeah. So Jukebox Musical is known for featuring popular songs, often achieve box office success. Examples include Mamma Mia and Moulin Rouge, the latter receiving eight Oscar nominations. Joker 2 is expected to break the mold of traditional musicals. Specific details about the plot of Folie Adieu have not been officially confirmed, but the film is described as a drama with elements taking place in and around Arkham Asylum. So this is what I mean. It still is a drama in the sense that you're still going to get the scenes of, like, Arthur walking about, I don't know, going from his cell to getting his face shaved, like in one of those, uh, I don't know, promo photos that Todd Phillips gave us with Hilda Goodnodottir's score. It's not going to be like music every single second, but I will admittedly say there's going to be a lot more musical numbers in it than, than what I initially thought. But that doesn't mean as well that they're like three and a half minutes long. They could be like really short things that are temporary, you know, diving into the shared madness, fully ado aspect of it that, you know, you snap out of it. Like there's dream sequency things, there's fantasizing moments from Harleen that kind of vibe, right? But I do think it's going to be great. Um, I, I mean, that. I think Joaquin's going to kill it as well, because if you didn't know already, I really enjoyed his voice as Johnny Cash and Walk the Line with Reese Witherspoon. It's going to be interesting to see how he sings as Arthur with Harleen. But yeah, I do expect dramatization. Like, there's going to be dialogue. It's not going to be, like, constant singing dialogue. But again, did not expect... 15 covers potentially and original song uh you know additional original songs on top of that so it's gonna be interesting to see what people are gonna say about this part of the video if you've made it to this part let me know down in the comments below but if you have any faith in what i say on this channel you hold any stock in my opinion i trust me i'm not really much of a musical guy i'm really not like i don't really care too much but you know sometimes if i watch i'm like ah, yeah 
think it's right, it's right, but I don't go out of my way to watch musicals. And what I would advise is going in with the kind of good faith that, um, you know, give the concept of Joker 2 with this, you know, stylistic choice of, you know, having musical numbers in it, a chance. And, um, you know, Harley and Joker, very theatrical characters who have actually sung in countless occasions in not only uh, media, but also the comic books. Um, it does fit, especially with the whole vibe of it all. But albeit, I do understand how it almost at its conceptual stage is a bit odd and or strikingly alienating to some viewers out there being like those who hold the opinion of not even needing a sequel in the first place but let alone you're doing a sequel and it's a musical i would say hold your horses and judge it when it comes and we get the trailer which is coming in just a few weeks time guys todd phillips confirmed that we're getting the trailer for joker 2 uh early april as in like probably around CinemaCon time so strap yourselves in we're gonna be doing a breakdown on the channel and i can't wait but that is everything now I've got to say in today's video, been quite a long one, would like to know your thoughts on everything we covered. Do consider subscribing, if you're not subscribed already you may think you are, but double check because I might just be getting recommended to your homepage and thus you thought you were subscribed, so double check. So many of you have said, oh I thought I was, so maybe today is the day you actually do hit the subscribe button. Consider liking it, it helps me in the algorithm, tells YouTube that you're enjoying my content so maybe others can find these videos as well. But ladies and gentlemen, I think that's everything. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.